Welcome back to the Two Minute Warning. Today I'm looking at the Carolina Panthers and explaining why I think this could be a possible playoff team heading into the 2021 NFL season. But before getting to that topic, question for those of you viewing, comment down below, especially the Panthers fans out there, do you think we have a playoff team on our hands here with the Carolina Panthers? Again, comment down below your thoughts. But getting into my thesis as to why I think we have a potential playoff team is, of course, going to come from the credit of how well this Panthers team has executed the NFL offseason from free agency to the NFL draft to the Sam Darnold trade. Just overall, they have executed every aspect of this offseason so far, in my opinion. Looking at the overall moves and changes we've seen from this team from 2020 to 2021, of course, before I get into every position, getting Christian McCaffrey back, looking who they had on defense and so on and so forth, Everything is going to rely on Sam Donald. No matter how good your receiving core is, your backfield is, your defense is, your coaching staff is, you can only get so far with a bad quarterback. So a lot is on Sam Donald's shoulders. But Sam Donald, say what you want about him. If you think he's great, if you think he's bad, if you think he shouldn't be in the NFL, whatever you think, you cannot tell me we have seen the best football out of this kid just yet. Looking at Sam Donald with the New York Jets. He's going from a 400-year-old running back in Frank Gore in New York to now a top three running back in Christian McCaffrey in Carolina. He's going from a awful coaching staff with Adam Gase to an up-and-coming coaching staff and Matt Rule, who finally has an extra year of the NFL under his belt, and Joe Brady, a very offensive-minded, of course, offensive-minded offensive coordinator, but a system that could fit Sam Darnold. Backfield, like I said, receiving core, not to take anything away from Jamison Crowd and Rashad Perryman, but Robbie Anderson, a guy Sam Donald already has chemistry with, along with DJ Moore and Terrace Marshall Jr., a wide receiver the Panthers drafted in the second round in the NFL draft this year out of LSU, is a much better upgrade compared to Crowder and Perryman in New York. Offensive line as well, they addressed that in the draft. In the third round, they drafted Brady Christensen, a great tackle out of BYU. Not saying this offensive line is the best in the NFL by any means, but you cannot tell me it's not better than what he had in New York. So on all aspects of offense, Sam Darnold is getting an upgrade now and is going to get, be given the opportunity to turn his career around. Looking at the defense, what they've done this year, they signed Hassan Reddick in NFL free agency to help out Derek Brown up front, a first round pick from the Panthers last year. And this was a good move. I mean, Hassan Reddick had a five sack game last season. I mean, you can't count on that. You can't count on him to do that every game. I don't know if you could count on him to do that ever again, but it just shows this guy has a lot of raw potential and just a lot of potential in general to go out there and be an absolute game changer. You got, like I said, Hassan Reddick and Derrick Brown holding down the front line, and then you have Trey Boston and the addition of um, Denzel Murray to hold down, or excuse me, Denzel Perryman to hold down the front seven. Looking at the secondary, you have up and coming Jeremy Chin at the safety position, but in the first round, you went out there and picked the number one corner in the draft, J.C. Horn. This was a surprising move, not only because we didn't know what the Panthers were doing. I thought they were going to go bold and possibly draft Justin Fields at number eight overall, or I thought they were going to invest in Sam Darnold to give him protection, possibly Rashawn Slater, who's available at the time, maybe a receiver. Yep, they went defense and went with J.C. Horn, and this wasn't surprising not just because they went defense, but who they chose on defense, because I believe a lot of people thought Patrick Sertain was the number one corner in the NFL draft. So the Panthers, while they didn't go bold in choosing a quarterback, they did make a bold pick in J.C. Horn, and I'm for the pick. I like J.C. Horn. I'm a big fan of him, but it is a bold move, and we'll see, if the, we'll see if it works out. But if he's a number one corner and a lockdown corner like he's supposed to be, it's going to work out in their favor, especially with the secondary with Jeremy Chin and an underrated pickup, in my opinion, this offseason after they got the addition of A.J. Boye. <clears throat> he's past his prime, but or he's getting past his prime, and he's not going to be a absolute lockdown corner, but he still has skill, he still has talent, and he can provide leadership and mentorship to this new, young secondary and Jeremy Chin and J.C. Horn. Overall, I like this team. They are just, I don't want to say stacked all around, but this is a very you know, they don't have the number one offense or number one defense or number one receiving core or number one secondary or number one quarterback, but they have one of the most well-rounded teams overall. Sam Darnold, he's <clears throat> possibly on his way to prove that he's an upper half quarterback in this league. Christian McCaffrey, okay, you might have the number one running back in the NFL, that's arguable, but you have a top backfield, you have a seemingly reliable receiving core, a defense that on paper 
seems to be reliable and you could count on him. We'll have to see it come into fruition and actually watch them play all together. The new additions of Hassan Reddick, Denzel Perryman, and JC Horn. But on paper right now, it's definitely one of the better ones in the league. So <clears throat> roster-wise, this team is ready to compete against anyone. Looking at their schedule for 2021, making sure they're not facing the toughest team every single week. It's not the easiest schedule, but it's not the hardest schedule as well. Of course, being in the NFC South, you're going to have to play the Bucks twice, the Saints twice, and the Falcons twice. And I'm not saying this Panthers team, me having them as a playoff team, I'm not saying they're going to go out there and win the division and take down the Bucks. That's not happening. But they could become a wild card team because looking at their division, they're not going to take down the Bucks, like I said, but they could take down a Saints who now has no Drew Brees and lost a couple pieces. We don't know what Michael Thomas is anymore, and they lost to Jared Cook. They lost to Trey Hendrickson. They lost to Janoris Jenkins. The Saints aren't what they were last year by any means. And the Atlanta Falcons, while they might be potent on offense with Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley, Kyle Pitts, Matt Ryan, in theory, that is a very dangerous offense, but a couple things to consider. There's a chance Julio Jones is traded, and if not, even if he isn't, <clears throat> Falcons seemingly don't have an identity for themselves. They don't. I feel like they don't know who they are, what they're playing with. Maybe Arthur Smith will go in and change that. But as of right now on paper, I feel like they don't exactly know what their game plan is. The Panthers, like I said, a very well-rounded team. I think they can handle the Saints and Falcons in their division. <clears throat> the other two um, divisions they play in the NFL is going to be the NFC and AFC East. NFC East, I've said it time and time again, NFC East, I do think, is the worst division of football still. However, this is not a division that I think the division winner and the team that enters the playoff, I don't think they're going to be below 500 again. Dallas getting Dak Prescott back. <clears throat> Washington football team have a pretty well-rounded defense. Giants, they got a stacked roster. The only thing they're question marking is Daniel Jones and then Jalen Hurts and the Eagles. I'm not too bullish on them, but again, not the greatest division of football, actually the worst division of football, but I don't think we're going to see a below 500 team make the playoffs again out of this division. So <clears throat> won't be easy, but I do think the Panthers could handle that division relatively well. AFC East, <clears throat> excuse me, that gets a little tricky. Josh Down and the Bills is always going to be lethal. Miami Dolphins, they have a well-rounded roster. Same thing as the Giants, but we have a question mark at quarterback. How is Tua Tungavailoa going to be? And then... New England Patriots, Bill Belichick is always dangerous. You can't count him out. We don't know how Mac Jones will be. We don't know what Cam Newton will be. We don't know who's going to start. But they've executed the NF they've executed the NFL offseason and especially NFL free agency just as well as the Panthers and New York. Hopefully Sam Donald can handle his old team. If not, that's not a great sign, but I do think they could definitely take on the New York Jets. <clears throat> 17th game this season. I got a little bit lucky getting the Houston Texans dealt to them. Of course, if Deshaun comes back, that's a different story. But at this current rate of looking like how they're going to, it looks like they're going to be facing a Houston Texans team without Deshaun Watson. I definitely think the Panthers can handle that team. And then the two interesting, the two most interesting games, in my opinion, in the NFC that the Panthers have to play are the Arizona Cardinals and Minnesota Vikings. The reason I think this is so interesting is because if you look at the NFC per se playoff picture in my head, current Currently, today, heading into the season, I have the division winners being the Bucks, Packers, assuming Aaron Rodgers is going to be staying with the Packers. I don't know how that's going to turn out, but just assuming he stays there. Again, I got the Bucks, Packers, one NFC East team. I'm not picking now who it's going to be, but only one team's coming out of that division, in my opinion. In the NFC West, we're going to get a division winner between the Seahawks, Rams, or Niners. I'm going to go with the Rams, but looking at the fifth and sixth seed, if it's not the whoever, if it's the Rams, I got the Seahawks. And Niners being five and six. And then the seventh seed is where things get tight. I think it's going to be the Panthers or the Cardinals or the Vikings. Those are my three teams that are going to be fighting fighting for the last spot in the NFL playoffs. Cardinals, Kyler Murray's getting better. They got T-Hop as always, but they added um, J.J. Watt. They're getting Chandler Jones back. They added A.J. Green. Cardinals team's looking pretty solid. Vikings with Kirk Cousins, Dalvin Cook, Justin Jefferson. Getting their defense back and Eric Hendricks and Anthony Barr and Harrison Smith and adding Patrick Peterson and taking Dalvin Tomlinson to help out Daniel Hunter. That is a dangerous team. But the Panthers, <clears throat> they can hold their own as well amongst the Cardinals and Vikings. And I think determining whether or not they're going to make the playoffs is going to come down to those two games when they play the Vikings and Cardinals. They're possible guys. The possible teams will be fighting a seven seed four. And it's going to come down to possibly a head-to-head -head matchup on who makes that playoffs. They might have a similar record, and it's going to come down to that head-to-head -head matchup. Like I said, the Panthers need that to go in their favor. And, of course, roster-wise, this team, 
I do think is on par with a lot of teams in the NFL, with the Vikings, with the Cardinals, maybe with a even Russell Wilson in the Seahawks, because after Russell Wilson, things kind of take a drop. Yeah, there's DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett and Jamal Adams and Bobby Wagner, but I feel like the Seahawks, they got a couple of specks of star talent all around their team, but when it comes to being well-rounded, I don't think the Seahawks come together like that. The Panthers, they don't, they aren't absolutely stacked on star power, but they have depth and are well-rounded, and that is where we're going to see a couple things. Who wins that battle? Depth and well-roundedness or just star power of a couple guys trying to carry an entire team? I'm not sure, but it's all just going to – we're just going to have to see how it plays out. I'm not going to predict right now if they'll make the playoffs because I don't know. I have to see these guys play. I have to see them be on the field, on paper. I can only speculate and assume and predict so much. I don't know how J.C. Horn's going to be. I don't know how Terrace Marshall's going to be. I don't know how Brady Christensen's going to be. I don't know how all these rookies are going to be. In theory, Panthers absolutely executed this draft and free agency, but I just had to see them play before I predict if they'll make the playoffs. I think they will. If I had to say yes or no, I do think this Panthers team will turn it around. But, <clears throat> excuse me, I just have to see it happen first and see a couple games to get a better judgment. But I think between their division matchups and their additions in this offseason, the Sam Darnold getting CMC back, um, Joe Brady and Matt Rule having a year of the NFL together under their belts, <clears throat> defense getting some additions, I do like this team to make a run for the playoffs. But as always, guys, comment down below your thoughts. Do you think this is a playoff team? And as always, thanks for watching. Two minute one.